I trained a number of chefs during my 30 years in the kitchen, and now in the same way, I'm able to teach you right here in your own home. It's all about raising the standards. So set up your laptops, sharpen your knives, and get ready to enjoy the techniques and tips from my kitchen. Hi, well this recipe we're doing today is chicken liver parfait with crostini and fig and lemon chutney. I'll just run you through some of the ingredients. Uh, we've got some uh, dried figs which have been cut in half, some dates, some soft brown sugar, some sliced lemon, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and some raisins. Um, we're going to start with uh, slicing up the onion. So I just cut the onion in half and just very finely slice it. And keep, remember, keep the tip of your knife on the board and just very gently rocking motion. Turn it over when it gets too high and it makes it much easier to, to handle. Okay, what we're going to do is just place all these ingredients for the chutney into a heavy bottom pot. That will prevent it from burning because we're going to have quite a lot of peat for quite a long period of time. So just pull your onions in. So add this sliced lemon, the raisins, soft brown sugar, and the dates. A little bit of cayenne pepper. You can always add a little bit more if you like it a little spicier. And the figs. And just to finish it off, we've got the malt vinegar. Now we're just going to place that on a medium heat. And it's going to take probably about 30 to 40 minutes. Probably half a flame would, would do it. Use a wooden spoon. Um, sometimes if you use a metal spoon, it can actually taint the um, chutney or the sauce or whatever you're making. So from there we're going to start on a chicken liver parfait itself. And I'll show you how to do that. So again, just get that tip of the knife on the board and just gently use that rocking motion. Don't use too much force, the knife should be sharp, so if it's not sharp, then you probably end up cutting yourself. Put those back in your little bowl. For something like this, preparation is the most important thing. You've got all your ingredients ready to go, it makes the job so much easier. So with your garlic, don't have to be too fussy with it, just give it a Quick bash and just run your knife through it just to break that up a little bit. So I'm going to take half of the butter and using a four litre pot, I'm going to add half the butter to the pot and then we're going to sweat the onions and the garlic. When we're talking about sweating we're talking about cooking the onion or the garlic without colour. So we're trying to bring out the natural sugars and this will develop the flavour much much more profound. Okay, as you can see the butter's melted, so we're just gonna add the, the onion and the garlic. And we're just gonna sweat this until it's nice and translucent and really nice and soft. And that way when we blend it, we don't end up with any little chunks going through the pate itself. Just gonna make sure that when you slice your onion, try and slice it so that the slices are quite even, so they cook at a they're all cooking at the same time. It's a really nice dish to do it for a dinner party. It's something that you're going to get in a restaurant. So, you know, be able to serve it to your friends at home and they'll think you've gone down to the shop and or bought it from some of the local restaurateurs. It's really quite, quite easy to make as well. Okay, now that onion is nice and tender. So I'm now going to add the cream. And what we're looking for here is to try to make a nice, rich sauce. So when we add it to the livers, it actually makes it even richer. I'm just going to leave that now and I'm going to just reduce that down to about half the consistency and that will become more syrupy and at the end we're going to add the rest of the butter. So I'm just going to prepare the livers now and I'm going to leave that just over a, over a medium heat. We don't want it to, to burn. Okay now for the livers, um, what we just need to do is make sure that there's no sinews inside them. So we've just got to turn them over and you'll find little, little bits of sinew where you can just cut those out. Most of these I've already done, so quite nice now. All right, so now we're just gonna process these in a food processor. We just wanna process them until they're nice and smooth, and then when we pass them through the sieve, it's a much easier job. So I'm just gonna check these livers, make sure that they're nice and smooth. 
they're looking, they're looking pretty good. So I'm just going to go and check the, the cream reduction. Make sure that it's nice and syrupy as it is. You can see it's reduced enough. So I'm just going to add the rest of the butter and then I'm going to let it cool before we add it to the chicken livers itself. So I'm just going to beat the butter in. I'll probably do that over here now. So make sure you get all that butter mixed in evenly. So that's looking pretty good. So what I can do now, just leave it to cool, because I don't want to add it to the, to the chicken livers until it is cold. We don't want to risk any food poisoning. Okay, now the cream reduction is, is cool. We're going to add it to the chicken livers, and then we're going to be blending it until it's nice and smooth. Just halfway through puree, just remove the lid and just give the side of the bowl a bit of a scrape down, make sure you get all that onion into the puree. Okay, that's had a really good puree, so we're just going to pass it through the sieve, just to remove any unwanted sinew. I just use a, a small ladle and a, a sieve that's not so fine, but you're able to be able to push all that beautiful looking liver through that sieve. Now you just have, do have to be careful with livers, obviously um, Keep them as cold as you can and only remove them from the fridge just before you're ready to use them and then back in the fridge until you're ready to cook them unless you're not going to cook them straight away. So shake off any excess, give them a mix. Now we're going to add some freshly ground pepper. Nice hearty dish with lots of flavour so a bit of sea salt. Okay now that we've got our mixture ready um, we're going to put them into our moulds to make sure you've got a, a deepish tray. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to half fill this with water, which is called a bain-marie, and that enables the pate to cook evenly without too much harsh heat on each side of the, uh, the moulds themselves. So just a little ladle and to your dish. And you can put it, these into any size dish you want, but I find these are small but they're probably big enough. So just um, wipe any spills that you've had and then just a little bit of hot water so that it's already got a, a start, it's going to heat, heat up in the oven. So just about halfway up the side of the moulds and that should do it. So I'm going to put that in an oven at about 160 degrees Celsius and it'll take about 15, maybe 20 minutes. So just check it as you go. Um, you don't want to overcook them, but they do need to be cooked all the way through. Okay, now what we're going to do is make the port wine jelly, just to glaze the top of the pate. It's, it'll help to protect it from drying out and also extend the shelf life. And all I've done here is I've soaked uh, one gelatin leaf and I've got 100 mils of port which I've just heated up. So um, just soak your gelatin in, in cold water. Um, if you soak it in hot water, it will just disappear. So soak it in cold water, just squeeze out any excess and straight into your to port. Just uh, mix it around until it's dissolved and just allow that to cool at room temperature until you need it. Okay, so we don't want it to, to cool too much, otherwise it's gonna set before we actually put it onto the top of the pate. So I'll just leave that here till we need it. And um, for the next job, I'm gonna make some crostini. Okay, we're going to make some crostini. Just use a, a small French stick or any, you know, you can use bread that you've got um, that is a little, maybe a little bit stale and cut it into um, squares or um, triangles, whatever shape you like. But I'm just going to use a small French stick and just slice it, a, not too thick. If you slice it too thick when you crostini it, it's going to be too tough to eat. So just nice, even slices. Sometimes you can actually freeze the bread and, and then uh, slice it from there because it's, sometimes it's, I find it easier. You don't crush the bread up so much. It's probably going to be enough for us for a pate. So just spread these out into your tray. Keep them flat because you don't want them overlapping otherwise they won't cook evenly. And I'm just going to take a, a brush and some, some olive oil and just dab it up liberally on top so you get a nice 
even coating. So from there I'm just going to turn it over and we want to do the other side as well. It's quite important to do the other side because you don't want it to be brown on one side and white on the other. That should do it. So again some fresh brown pepper. I always season everything. And some salt. Okay, so they're just ready to go in the oven. And again, just a moderate oven, 160 to 175. And do check it because it will they can brown very quickly. So I'll just pop these into the oven. And I can see that the pate is ready. You can see it's just, just started to bulge on top, so I know that there's enough heat in there. It's just starting to, to heat through from the bottom. So I'm going to take those out of here, let them cool to um, room temperature before we put the jelly on, and pop them in the fridge. Okay, now we've, um, we've got the jelly ready to put onto the pate. The pate's completely cold, and you can, as you can see, that it's slightly settled. It's still got that sort of pink tinge to it. Tinge to it. So um, we're ready to go with the jelly. And if you have a look at the jelly, it's just starting to go to a syrupy consistency. And I'm just going to put a little spoonful on the top of each pate. And that's just going to help to protect it from the, from the air. But as soon as the air hits the, pat, uh, the liver itself, it can go a little bit grey. So this is going to help to protect it. Okay, so once, once you've got that, you just pop it into the fridge and it's going to only take about 5 to 10 minutes to, to set. Okay, we're now ready to plate up the, the parfait. So I'm just going to remove the crostini from the oven. Now I've checked it halfway through cooking and I've just turned them over so they get an even, even colour and we don't get any burnt ones. So I'm just going to make a little stack on the, the board. So you want about sort of 5 or 6 crostini per portion. And we're just going to pop those in the middle of the plate. Now I chuck these all finished and I've just allowed it to cool and it's really nice and sticky and beautiful flavour. I've checked the flavour out, checked the seasoning and again you know you can use this for grilled beef dishes or chicken. Um, wouldn't use it so much for fish but venison is really good with venison. So I just want to take a nice spoonful of the chutney. Don't be shy, plenty of it. And lastly, a little chicken liver parfait, which is nice and cold. The jelly set, and just pop that on the plate. And that's just going to be an entree for uh, your guests. Really rich, very inexpensive to make, and one of those things you should really try at home. Hope you enjoy it.